Knife Watch. Where I grew up in New York City, New York, the way that you grow up is you're just going to be surrounded by hip hop culture, dancing, music, the clothes, the everything, the style, the way people act is braggadocious. Even the lamest person in New York City dresses well and it's all about, you know, making sure they're well kept together. It's a hard city to make it in and to make it out of. However, one of the things that really separates you from your peers is um, whether or not you can win a rap battle. So I ended up rap battling a lot when I was a kid. I loved to freestyle, you know. It wasn't just about ma your mama jokes or making fun of each, each other, you know. It, it was also about style. It was about how you carried yourself. It was about your, uh, your confidence. So I wanted to bring back one of my favorite loves, which is rap battles, and one of my new favorite passions, which are watches, bring them together. Okay, one plus one equals three, right? So today will be the first edition of the Strap Battle, brought to you by Knife Watch. Today, I am going to be comparing two of my all-time favorite watches. This is the Baltic Aquascaf in Blue Gilt, a classic, probably the face of Baltic watch as a brand. These are... Uh, assembled in France, and the Tudor Black Bay 58, one of the most popular watches in the world, arguably the best value, dollar for dollar or pound for pound, in the luxury watch game. So I thought it was unfair to judge a watch that uh, really is not going to cost you more than seven or $800 ever, and a watch that, uh, you know, is, is in the thousands. So I didn't want to just go... <laughs> dimension by dimension, right, and say which one is better. I actually wanted to go by the actual, you know, quality of the watch in terms of style, braggadociousness, confidence, and all that. So in today's strap battle, we are going to be featuring a few different things, and I'm going to keep score here. It is possible that there could be a tie if, uh, if it comes up, but I'm doing this live with you. I've not gone through this beforehand. It's time to mess up my watch lugs and to really go down the line here. This is a Fisher Space Pen. It actually um, looks like a bullet. So shout out to Fisher Space Pens. They're very cool, um, but no, this is not a firearm, okay? Um, so Baltic versus Tudor, all right? So we're gonna first go over which one looks better with, on a bracelet. Then we're gonna go on whatever leather strap I, I have chosen previously for each watch. We're gonna try it on a gray NATO. We're gonna try each on a beige leather strap. And then we have the X Factor round, which will be, if these kind of get kind of close, we're gonna have the X Factor round, which will mean we will put them both on rubber. We will put them both on another color NATO, which will be an X Factor color for each. And then we will try it on a canvas leather strap. To find out which one of these is the best strapper in the world, top five, dead or alive, let's begin. So first things first, um, what am I going to do with these watches? I absolutely love them. Um, I, I can't wear both of them at the same time, right? You gotta wear one watch. I guess you could double watch, but my wife will call me out. So first we have the Baltic on bracelet. This is a blue gilt watch. These, both of these watches are 200 meters water resistance. And this is the actual Baltic strap that, uh, Baltic bracelet that comes straight from Baltic. You can see it signed there. Very nice light play, stark contrast between the uh, satin finish here and the uh, polished edges here. So we got beads of rice, which is really beautiful. It's basically like another version of uh, Jubilee, you could say, uh, but grains of rice, beads of rice, whatever you call them, extremely comfortable, been famous for decades for a reason and has a really nice wrist presence. I have it about a seven inch wrist. So these are both uh, around the same size. This is a 38 millimeter watch. And I think it just looks great. It looks fantastic here. Uh, let me get this out of the way. So just, just sitting alone on its own, I'm gonna say this looks great. Um, I don't really know what the score would be from your side, but you can keep score at home and let me know if I'm bugging here. But on bracelet, this Baltic watch, I'm going to give this an eight, okay? Um, so we're going to start there, give that Baltic an eight, all right? Guys, don't mind my handwriting, all right? Um, I'm a, I was born in the digital age, so. Um, here we go. Time for Tudor's chance. This is the Tudor Black Bay 58 um, with a, this is 
obviously a classic in the, in the Swiss world. Tudor is obviously related to Rolex, so very classy watch. They've been making dive watches since dive watches existed, pretty much. Um, and, you know, there's also Omega up there. Um, Guangpong 50 Fathoms was technically the first, but there's some arguments about that. But anyway, this is a classic look. This really does give homage to the Rolex big crown and just a fantabulous watch, okay? It just looks amazing. It looks classy. It looks glamorous. It's, um, but it's also sporty. It's, it looks strong. It looks masculine. It does everything well. Whatever you like, whatever your style is, the Black Bay 58 seems to complement it. Got lots of colors here. But on bracelet, I'd say it really does look fantastic. You got these faux rivets, which are a point of contention. I think it does differentiate the bracelet from other bracelets, it, it does add a little bit of toughness or at least um, excitement to the actual look of the, the actual bracelet, however you look at it, but extremely comfortable as well. Man, um, but this bracelet also has a signed clasp. It's polished internally, um, three micro addressed. Um, on this Baltic watch, we have actually six, one, two, three, four, oh my gosh, seven micro adjust on this Baltic bracelet. Sorry, I was out of frame for a second. And um, also signed, it just says stainless steel, so not signed as well as the Tudor is, um, but clearly both of these bracelets are really great. What should I give the Tudor on bracelet? I'm sorry, but I've got to give it a nine, okay? Um, now, which one of these wins the bracelet competition? You know, in terms of overall, that makes a difference. But one of the things that is a differentiator here is this Baltic bracelet actually has quick release, okay? So I can actually, right now, as easy as one, two, three, take off this bracelet. Can you believe me? Yeah, I'm telling the truth here as we move on to the next strap. Um, so that would actually give you, um, you know, just to, just to give brownie points here to Baltic for that, I'm going to give you an 8.5. All right. The bracelet is fantastic, but, um, it's not a Tudor bracelet. Okay. It's very close though. Value for money. It's a 10 out of 10, but for all intents and purposes, the bracelet wrap battle strap battle, excuse me, goes to the Tudor. All right. What's up next is leather. Now let's bring them into frame while I change straps. The leather strap that will be competing today for the Baltic will be the actual Baltic worn and wound edition of the Baltic leather strap. So this is a Baltic strap, but this actually comes on the salmon dial for the uh, worn and wound limited editions. And it's, it's a beautiful strap, really quality and perfectly matches the blue gilt. And today competing for the Tudor will be a black Hodinkee strap that I got um, from Houdinki. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, both of these watches are 20 millimeters in lug width. So you've got a very, very nice, uh, just, just options with both of these watches. Which watch is better overall? I mean, it's just not fair to go back and forth on those things because of the price point. I know a lot of people say that, um, you know, you should probably uh, just get both. <laughs> you should probably just get every watch you can afford, right? Um, I tried that strategy and um, I've had to really cut back recently and my life and my sanity has been much better. So take your time with your collection. Don't just buy every watch that you see knife watch wear or buy. Um, really get what you like and um, what really you love first. If, if you don't fall in love when you see it, if it doesn't shout out to you, then it's probably not that deep that you, you don't need that watch that badly. But here we go. Let's begin. So... Now we've got leather. Now the thing about leather is, come on, you know, these are dive watches. Should you really put a, a dive watch on a leather strap? Arguably, no, because if you're going to get it wet, um, that could be a huge mistake. You know, a dive watch, you're gonna dive with leather and ruin it in one swim. Um, yeah, water does destroy leather straps extremely quickly and it doesn't matter how much money you pay. Eventually, that water will, uh, you know, get into the middle of that texture and wither it away. It will decay. And even if you don't get it that wet, it could actually um, do some real damage to the actual quality of the leather. And actually, it could, uh, what's it called? Um, mold. So that's not something you want to deal with either, right? If you wear a, a, a wet watch strap and you just put it aside, 
you come back a few days later and it's actually molded, uh, that's not fun. So, okay, hopefully I get better at changing watch straps throughout this series of strap battles. But anyway, I hope you're keeping score. What did you think for the, the bracelet for these watches? Were you a fan of the Tudor? Did you like the, the beads of rice, that sort of classic style? Um, which one did you prefer? So here we've got the Tudor on leather. Let me get these bracelets out of the way. You guys are old news. I'm sure I'll put you back, both back on bracelet uh, as soon as this video is over, probably. Okay, and same thing here, you know, Baltic. You know, should you put this on a leather strap? You know, maybe, maybe not. Um, another part that's really different, you know, about this this battle that really may not be fair is that Tudor's Black Bay 58 here, the example I have here is in black with gold accents. So it lends itself to agreeing with a little bit more color palettes, but the the Baltic you know, Aquascaf does have some some sex appeal here with that Fotina, or you could just call it a cream meringue um, color. I, I don't think this is fake patina. I think this is actually just supposed to be um, a nice deep color. But if you see the nine o'clock and the three o'clock indices here, these are actually sandwiched um, and the six o'clock as well. So this is a sandwich style too. So it doesn't get a lot cooler than that. These both have some style to them. Okay, leather on, wow. this. Let's just start with the Tudor, since we started with the Baltic last time, and the Tudor just won the last section. On bracelet, this, uh, I think, really presented more masculine and tough and sporty and uh, a little bit casual. But this here, this just looks pure class. I mean, this looks like a dress watch. Um, it doesn't really look like a dive watch. And you can really see how on the, the leather, there is going to be a lot of differentiation when it comes to the, the modularity uh, of style that you can use for this, right? You can wear this with a tux. You can wear this to a wedding. You can wear it to a black tie event. No one's gonna call you out because it's a tutor. So, you know, luxury watches, almost any luxury watch is gonna be a pass at a, at a dressy event. But here, for some reason, this works just as well as maybe a classic gold watch would for a classic event. I think it presents really nicely. The spacing between the actual uh, lugs and just the way the overall architecture of the watch is, is just very agreeable. It feels like a family that works together. Wow, this is a really strong presentation on leather. <sighs> Man, I'm um, sorry, but th that's just a nine kind of experience. I almost want to give it a 10, but um, that Tudor gets a nine from me. If you're keeping score, what do you give the Tudor on this Odinky croc Crocodile or Alligator Strap? Time for the Baltic. This is a Horween Shell Cordovan, so not too shabby here for the Baltic. Um, this is really going to be the underdog here in general throughout this battle. It's blue. Blue doesn't go with as many things as black does, but uh, let's give it a shot. Here on this strap, wow, this is extremely strong as well. Um, you can see how the navy, navy blue of the strap, it's almost black. I hope the real, I hope the colors are differentiating a bit. If not, let me get some, let me get some background here. Here I've got a limited edition Spyderco handkerchief. So maybe this will make the blue pop a little bit differently for you on, on your lighting. Turn up the lighting on your camera or your phone, uh, excuse me, on your phone or your computer if you are watching this and really can't make out the navy. Colorblind people, I'm really sorry for this part of the battle, but for all intents and purposes, it's a navy blue leather. And I think these little holes in here, uh, where you can actually see the inside of the strap, that actually matches very beautifully with the actual uh, little dots here on the watch here, whether it be the indices. Um, and yeah, this looks, looks very sporty as well, everyday wear. Would I wear this to a wedding? Um, I could. It, it could. it could commit to a dressy event, absolutely. Um, I think this would be a great everyday wear. Definitely would be no problem wearing this to a an interview or or somewhere like that, but it's not going to carry that same wow factor. Actually, the navy on navy kind of dulls it down a little bit um, compared to the the alligator and the rose gold here on the Tudor. Really not fair for the Baltic. It came so close. I'm going to go with an eight here, uh, not an eight point five. It looks great on this strap. I think this is the best strap you could possibly get for this watch. Um, but unless you have the worn and wound version of this, of this Baltic, 
then uh, you're gonna have a hard time finding this brace, this strap. But a navy navy leather looks fantastic. Um, Tudor wins again. Wow, wasn't expecting that, but um, here we go. So what do you? What score do you have so far? Um, we're about 15 minutes in, and we're not really that far along in the battle. So sorry if this is a laborious video for you, but thankfully Baltic has another improvement here, which is actually these uh, obviously drilled lugs. So I can take out this strap and it's a breeze. And, and guys, please get a better, get a better uh, you know, spring bar tool than, than I have here. I can't find my Bergeon. I just moved and I don't know where I put my Bergeon strap changer. So sorry if it looks a little bit terrible for now, but what score did you have? Up next, we're gonna have the Gray NATO. So um, stay tuned and let me know your thoughts so far on this one. And uh, we'll go from there. So this has been part one of the battle between the Tudor Black Bay 58 and the Baltic Blue Gilt Aquascaf. And um, make sure you stay tuned to the series as I'm really excited. And make sure you like and subscribe if you want to catch the rest of this strap battle. Peace and love. Take care of yourself. Knife Watch out.